How y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, it has been a while since I've done any ultralight fishing, man. Too long. But today's the day, by gosh. I got my ultralight, I got some gulp minnows, and me and you, we're gonna work a shoreline today in this creek. We're gonna hit these docks down through here. We're gonna hit some brush, overhanging trees and stuff. And we're gonna catch whatever. We could catch it at anything that wants to give us a tug on the line. I am ready for it, man. So I'm gonna bring y'all with me today unedited raw and uncut you're gonna see every cast we make here there was something something right there on the dang shoreline popping up trying to get a cameo on this while we do an intro here but anyway y'all gonna see every cast day just like you is out here with me so get you get your ultralight pole and let's go if you're new to my channel this is my rig here this is my ultralight rod st croix panfish series rod it's six foot long ultralight action i've got a diowa 1000 size regal reel lt model two pound test trout magnet sos line as the goose over there is very happy we're here and this right here is what we're going to catch these fish on if i can get it in the light that's a 164th ounce jig head number eight size hook one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color as the goosey is going crazy my phone was dinging over here y'all tell whoever's calling me we got fish to catch we ain't got no time to be talking nobody on no phone today we be doing no messaging today so anyway let's start making some cast here y'all this water in here chocolate milk we have had a bunch of rain and we have had a water drop and boy, the, the, these creeks, these backwaters are just pure mud. But I'm hoping we get this jig in front of their face, we're going to catch them anyway. Some people will tell you to use either a darker color in muddy conditions or a bright color. Here's my thought on that. Shad which looks just like this color of gulp we're using, this smelt color. Looks just like our threadfin shad. Them shad in the water, they don't change color. They don't turn dark, and they don't turn bright orange when the water gets muddy. So the fish that's eating them still got to be able to eat them regardless. So that's my thinking on the color. We use, I'm going to use what I got, by gosh. I do. I'm in my my kayak today that's got the live scope here on. So as we come into these docks and whatnot and brush, and actually I think right here up under this dock, look yonder there. Let's let's slide around here and I'll show you that screen. There's something up under there. I don't know. Let me get to, over here and get this thing turned in such a way that we can, oh yeah, look at this, y'all. Look at this. Hopefully the glare ain't too bad. All that right yonder there, that's fish. They're up under this dock. Now, unfortunately, this dock here has got them plastic flotation pods. It's going to be hard to, you can't, can't really skip it up under there because the plastic pods go down to the water line. We're gonna have a hard time, but we got a fish on just like that. But let's see what these are. Let's see what this is. That's a bluegill. Fish number one, we got us a bluegill, y'all. You ain't getting skunked today. How about that? I got my bucket here too. We may, if we get on some crappie, we may keep a few for some catfish bait. Look how pale he is. That fish right there did did turn colors a little bit, didn't he? From this muddy water. But they turn lighter, lighter in color. Not dark or bright orange or hot pink. We'll start here. We'll see if we can catch a few of these. And then we'll move on. There's some more docks in this creek. There's some uh, brush and whatnot. And, we're just gonna fish for a couple hours out here, probably, maybe a little longer if the wind allows. The wind is supposed to kick up really bad today. Midday is what the forecast is calling for. 
And any y'all out there that does ultralight fishing, you know, you get the wind blowing, you can't feel a daggone thing as far as the bites go with this ultralight. You just can't do it. You, you can't, the wind blows the bow in the line and you can't feel nothing. So we'll fish till, till the wind gets going here. I wonder if that, oh, I wonder if they ain't something. I, you know, here's one, here's an idea. These fish are kind of, they're, from where that transducer's pointing, they're right there under that dang, the beginning of that, I don't even know what you call them things, pods? Some dock flotation. You know what I'm trying to say. They're right there under that thing. This dang water's so muddy, I don't know if they're going to come out for it. Let me back us off this a little bit first off. Let's just shine this thing around and see if there's any more. Man, there's all kinds of fish. And they are all kinds, and they are stacked right there. But man, they are up under this stuff that I can't hardly get to. I almost wonder if I couldn't go to that other side over yonder and, and hit it from an angle that way, go between them two pieces of flotation there. Let's try that. That might give us a better angle on it because I don't know that we're going to be able to... If this is a wooden dock, we might have a little space where we could, we could skip a jig or something up under there. I want y'all to catch some fish today, by gosh. I've been, I've been having a hankering real bad to do some ultralight fishing. It's just been so dang windy and it's been so cold. And, and this time of year, a lot of the fish in the winter months, the big concentrations of them will go deeper. And so I don't have the patience to sit down there and let a jig sink 15, 20 feet. But we've had some warmer temperatures in the afternoons here in the last few days. And them old flares, what are they called? Uh, I don't know what, are the daffodils maybe? They're them yellow flowers that people used to plant at the old homesteads and stuff. And um, every year, late winter, early spring, them things pop up out the ground. And they've started popping up the last few days. And an old wives' tale is, you know them old wives tell, some of them old wives lie and some of them tell the truth. You just, it's case by case basis. But the old wives tell is that when uh, daffodils or whatever them flares are pop up, here's a fish, another bluegill right there. I wonder if all of them are bluegill or if they, they look like some bigger marks in there, like it might be some crappie in it. But anyway, that old wives tell is when them things pop up out the ground, the crappie's in the shallows. That's what I've always heard. And so even though we're still in February here and water temps here at 48 degrees today, they is clearly some fish in the shallows because we're seven feet deep here under this dock. I, I thought I had another one on. I wouldn't mind getting some crappie. I brought the bucket just in case. Here in East Tennessee, if you catch a crappie on rod and reel and he's at least 10 inches long, I had another one hit me. Uh, but if he's at least 10 inches, you can use him for catfish bait. And I wouldn't mind having me a few for the next catfish trip. Oh, he thumped it. Did you see my did you see my rod tip go boom? <laughs> he's just a he's just a bluegill man. He thumped it hard. <laughs> I know he's a small bluegill, but you know what? You get an ultralight set up like this. A little four or five inch bluegill. It'll give you a good time, man. It ain't the size of the fish. 
so much as it's the tackle you're catching it on and right there's another one we're hitting it from an angle and we're able to get up under there where they're at he popped free we'll work our way around this dock there may be some on the other side too possibly it looks like there's about a billion fish under this thing I can get us to Oh, oh, well, he was swimming with it. I didn't know that one was on. Another small bluegill, though. But my gosh, they're up here in the shallows. They're up here thick, man. I may keep a bluegill or two at some point this morning. Bluegill ain't my favorite bait, you know. Oh, crap. That cast right there didn't go very well. I don't know if we'll catch one on it or not. <clears throat> kind of kind of what I thought I'd do is I would fish this morning with the ultralight and see if we could get some stuff here before the wind kicked up. And then, what a cast, y'all. I wish y'all would cast under that dock instead of over it. We wouldn't get hung up as much. But I thought after the wind kicks up, I'll go after some skipjack and see if I can get some of them. I won't, I won't hassle y'all to come with me on that because we'll be doing some trolling and we may have to cover some water, a lot of water too, with as muddy as this area is. I don't know. I don't know how the skipjack fishing is going to go today. But the ultralight, at least, has started really well here. First dock we come to, I launched here in the back of this creek. And I come, there's a this dock and there's one on the other side. And it looks like it's mostly out of water over there with the water level the way it is. There's another fish. And so I come over here because this one looked like it had more water and it's in the sun and it's a little chilly this morning and ultralight fishing goes better when you can feel your hands <laughs> if you can if you can feel your your digits there you can oftentimes feel a bite let me back us up a little bit here again i'm in this kayak i have access to the live scope but I normally do my ultralight fishing in my pedal kayak because I like being able to work the pedals with my feet while I cast. It helps me keep better positioning. That's my preferred platform. There was a, oh, I had a little thump. That's my preferred platform for this ultralight fishing, but I wanted to, I wanted to take a look around today with the live scope and just see if I could find anything on some brush in here. I thought we might see some crappie somewhere down in here. Boy, I got line problems. Y'all could have reminded me to change my line out. It's been a while since we used this rod. One thing I didn't bring was my cast net, so we we ain't cast net and no shad day whatever whatever we get is what we're gonna have to, oh lord all right we'll see if we can make that cast work but whatever we get today that's what we're gonna have for bait on our next trip so if we don't get no skipjack if we don't get no crappie we, we may have to come back here this after or later on this morning here and get some of these small bluegill just so we'll have something to catfish with put all my put all my eggs in that in that basket you know there's another thing i was wanting to do today too with this live scope is get out here at some point probably after the wind kicks up and take a look around see if we can find some cats i brought my other pole with the heavier jig on it my last bait run, I went out and I got shad pretty quick and uh, the creek I was getting them in, I started seeing some marks that were up higher in the water. I cast that jig down. I ended up getting several cats and a 
a big drum. So, wouldn't hurt my feelings to get a few today. We, we just having fun today, y'all. You come with me today, we're going to have some fun. This is some fun fishing. This right here is one of my favorite ways to catch fish. It's just, it's very productive. You, you, you get a ton of bites. Even, I mean, here we're in February. 48 degree water temps, and we're still getting bit right here. And getting a bit more frequently if I can get a cast where I need to go. My casting skills, you know, you got to cut me in. Cut me some slack here. I'm a catfisherman, y'all. We don't cast. No oh, Lord. Well, if y'all'd operate this motor for me and keep me off this dock a little bit, we'd have an easier time. I don't know if you noticed the theme, but everything I do wrong is your fault. <laughs> That's just a fact, y'all. That's the way of life. I'm glad whoever was dinging my phone right after I started the video quit. Hopefully they'll get the message I'm unavailable. Nobody ever wants to call or message you until you're doing something. Then they won't leave you the hell alone. I need to leave my phone on today because I'm expecting a phone call. So y'all may be privy to that. Since we're going unedited here, y'all may hear the whole conversation. A bunch of eavesdroppers. Is that a fish? Oh, it is a fish. I wasn't sure if I had a fish if I was wrapped up in that cord right there. Let's see what this is. Is that another bluegill? I thought for sure some of them fish under there might be crappie, but maybe they bluegill. I'm going to take a camera here and show you again just for doo -doos and giggles. So this piece of tape here, you can see there on that um, pole, that's that is the direction that transducer is shining right now okay so it's going right basically where that cord's hanging off a dock that's where it's shining you look over here at the screen we're six feet deep all that right there's fish that's either that or that is the beginning of that dock and then all them fish so they're kind of the bulk of the school is more up under there if y'all wanted to trespass, and I ain't that type of person, but some of you are. Some of you watching this video out there is a bunch of criminals. I know you are. But if you wanted to trespass and we got up on that dock and dropped the jig straight down, I bet you we'd, we'd be able to get several more fish over there where they at. If I could make a cast back there, Further up under there, too, we'd get more fish. But yeah, I mean, six feet deep here, 48 degree water. But this muddy water, especially on these warmer afternoons, it's warmer than the main channel out there right now. So sometimes in winter months, Early spring, you get water temperature that's a little bit different, a little bit warmer, a couple degrees. That can make all the difference in the world, fish being stacked up. The cats I've been getting lately, though, they still been deep, real deep. So I, I just, I've been hitting different areas, different depths, but the success I've had I've had a lot, of, it's been hit or miss for me on the cats lately. It's been mostly misses, if I'm being honest. But my best days have been fishing really deep. Oh. One of you just need to move that cord. It's just dangling there. That was another lousy cast. We need to back off this dock a little bit. That's what we need to do. I need one of you to drive our kayak here and let me let me cast. If y'all ain't gonna reel in any fish, the least you can do would be drive this thing. Let's spin around here. We'll see if we can't work around to find us another place where we can put this jig. Like I said, if y'all is a bunch of trespassers. You could get you a, 
a jig where you need it to go. Some of them YouTubers will, they'd get up on that dock and call the law on themselves just so when the cops show up, they'd have a clickbait title and a clickbait thumbnail. They'd say, fish caught, law called, or something, you know, something stupid. It's funny how one YouTuber back in the day got caught trespassing, and suddenly everybody had these trespassing videos. Funny how that works. One person gets an extra click, and they all gonna go try to get arrested to get an extra click. I'm too pretty to be going to jail, especially over no YouTube clicks. I'll just, I'll just abide by the law. I may speed a little, a little bit to get here, but that's just going to get me a, a ticket from the pokey if they catch me. What's that old saying with cops uh, when it comes to speeding? Five in your fine, nine in your mind, something like that. I think I went over the okay. There's a rope hanging down right there, so I can't I can't skip it right through there where I want to. Cause that dang rope. We got obstacles on this dock. Hopefully the next dock we come to will be a little bit more agreeable with making cast to. I need level easy is what I need. This is more advanced stuff right here. I'm going to try to... This may be stupid because I bet there's more stuff up under that contraption there, but I'm going to throw one up under there and see what happens. Yeah, y'all, I wanted to get out here today and I just, I've had a hankering for it, man. I, I've missed it. I went down to Florida back there in November. It was week of Thanksgiving. I went down there and I caught some big bluegill and some peacock bass and those exotic fish there on the ultralight. And then I went on down to the Keys and I caught, I caught a bunch of snapper on ultralight and some other various fish. I have no idea what they were. I just had a, a good old time, but get up here in Tennessee, man, it's been cold. Been cold all daggone winter. Boy, finally, I'm hoping we've turned the corner on it here now. We've getting late February. March is always a month for us that's hit or miss. It's, it's some, sometimes in March, We've got warmer weather, and sometimes it's freezing cold. Whether it's warm or cold, we usually got a lot of wind in the, in the month of March, but either way, better days are coming, folks. If nothing else, it's getting lighter for longer. Every day, we're adding a minute of, of daylight. Plus, we got the time change coming up here next month, so. Which, you know, the time change. You adding an extra hour of daylight on the clock. You ain't actually adding another hour of daylight. You know what I mean? It just, we just take that hour from the clock in the morning to the afternoon, but it's the same amount of time. It's just most people's work schedules. They go from it being dark when they get off work to still being a little bit light out. Oh, what a cast. Gosh, dog it. Here's, there's more up under this thing too here. Let's, let's come around this from a different angle. You know, me being an old Southpaw, I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be cast in a certain way, y'all. I'm, you know, us left-handed people. 
there's about 5% of you watching right now that can relate and 95% of you that need to keep your trap shut because you don't understand what it's like to be a, a left-handed cripple like us. You can't cast but certain ways. You, you can't find scissors that'll work for you. You can't get a can opener to work for you. It's hard being left-hander. You right-handed people, you just don't know. All right, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what's up under there. I mean, there's definitely some stuff there. Maybe bluegill, maybe all bluegill under this dock, and that's okay. The fact that they're here in such big numbers is encouraging that we're going to get on either some more of them that are better quality or some crappie or some yellow bass. Who knows? But if the bluegill are up here that thick, like they are under this dock, there's going to be more stuff in this creek. Here's one. Uh, oh, okay. There's Mr. Crappie. He's a shorty. He's a long ways from 10 inches, but at least one of them marks up under there was a dang crappie. There you go, crappie number one, y'all. Crappie number one, species number two. Let's see if I can mosey on back over here. All right. Business just picked up. That's a better cast right there. I, I'm optimistic we might catch one on that. Funny how that works. You get a cast where you want it to go and you catch fish more frequently. I may have jinxed it on that one though. Typically, that's how it goes. Maybe not in that scenario right there. Take this old motor here and spin us back around a little bit. It's a new motor here, y'all. I don't know if I've... I think I... I may have talked about that on the unedited catfish video with Daniel, but I know I mentioned it in my last, one of my edited videos for catfish. I got back to the launch one day and I loaded up the kayak and I pulled up the boat ramp and I got out to strap it down and you know the kayak and the trailer sitting there on an incline it's on an angle and i noticed oil or grease whatever was dripping out the head of the dang motor and i was like well that ain't no good so i messaged ryan boards so a lot of people think me and ryan hate each other because we talk so much trash on the interweb about each other but we're actually friends in real life and I reached out to him because he's very mechanically inclined and I see him a little video of that oil and grease and everything dripping off that. Here's fish. What's this? Oh, another crappie. Okay, he's another short one though. But uh, he diagnosed the problem instantly because he had had it happen to him on his motor guide motor. He said the seals had went bad and let water in that motor. Apparently there's two seals and they go bad, water gets in and because I was parked on that incline, the water was coming out of the motor down the shaft and running out the head unit there. And Ryan, Ryan said when he had it happen to him, he fixed it. Uh, he just replaced the seals, which I looked them up. It's a pretty cheap fix. You can get the seals they're a cheap part and i'm not the most mechanically inclined person but i'm i'm assuming there's probably videos online on how to do it but here's the problem with that and this is what ryan ran into he replaced his and then two months later his motor fried we were down on nickajack fishing that first tournament of the season last year oh big thump Big thump from small crappie. You had a 
You had a big bite there, crappie, but you a long ways from 10 inches. I ain't putting you on no board. You're probably in that seven inch range, eight inch range maybe. But Ryan, he, he fixed his motor, replaced some seals, motor run fine until it didn't. And he gets stranded down there on Nick Jack, had to be towed back to the launch because his motor just fried. And basically what he said was the, you can replace them seals, but once water's got in that motor there, you've, you've displaced the, all that oil and the grease and stuff. You've displaced it and who knows how long you've had to leak for. Cause I had no, on mine, for example, I don't know if you can see there on my kayak with the screen in the way, but there's a grease spot there. I had noticed that a few trips before. There was a spot, I got home, there was a, a dirty spot there on the hatch. It was wet and I thought, I've just, I've been dripped on under a red light or a power line or going under a tree or something, just something dripped on me. Uh, but it was after I'd actually seen water dripping out of that dang head, I, I knew like, well, this has been going on a hot minute. So who knows how much oil and grease and everything in that motor I have lost. So anyway, I was basically like, well, I can replace the seals and chance it. Cause the motor was still running fine at that point. I mean, I got back to the launch, but I was like, I got all these trips coming up. We our tournament season on the catfish term trail. It's getting ready to start. And the last thing I want to do is be four or five, six hours away from home for some trip and my motor go out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get me a new one. So I did. I got, Another motor guide, XI-3, but I didn't get it with GPS. I just replaced the GPS in the other motor a few months before because it had went out. So I put that GPS, well that fish right there is dang near on the bottom, man. These things are, the crappie, it's like they're sitting on the bottom right there. We'll, we'll measure this and I think he's still gonna be short, but. I'm sitting here talking to y'all. I ain't really paying attention to the screen. But I think those right there, I think those might be fish that are sitting on bottom. These are up under the dock there, but that right there, I don't, we shouldn't measure this. He ain't going, I can tell you right now, he ain't nowhere near close. No, he's nine, nine and a quarter there. So thank you anyway, crappie. Thanks for playing. So anyway, I saved a few hundred bucks by getting the non-GPS version, taking my GPS off the old one, putting it on that one. And now I've got basically a brand new motor. I, well, I mean, the motor is new, but with the GPS and all that. So frustrating to do that, but I'm convinced that these companies like Motor Guide and Minco, oh, I had one hit me there. All these companies, if you got a one year warranty on that motor, they're building these products to last 366 days because then they want you buying replacement parts, replacement motors, all that's good for business. And it ain't like it ain't like you can just say, well, I'm gonna pay a little more and get this brand because they're better quality or this, that, and the other. They all suck. Every last one of them is terrible quality. They're all junk. Every motor I've had, and I think I mentioned this when I noticed the problem there of uh, the, the grease leaker. I've had a ton of issues with every motor that I've ever put on a kayak. I, I started there, I had that uh, Torquedo motor few years ago on my Hobie Outback. I had four warranty claims in two years. I had three of the motor pylons fried, and then I had a battery that wouldn't charge. And Torquedo makes you use their battery. So uh, I had to have that replaced. So four warranty claims, two years. Then I got that Old Town Kayak, the autopilot that had the Minkota motor with it. 
I had two warranty claims in it in a year. The day one I had it, the GPS went out. So they replaced it. A few months after that, the other motor in it went out. There's these motors, they've got the motor that turns the prop, obviously, and then there's another motor up top that turns it. The motor that turns it is what went out on that Minn Kota. So another warranty claim. Two in a year. And then my other motor guide, I had it, I got it, I think, in summer of 2021. So not even three full years, two and a half years, basically. But in that time, two and a half years, I went through three remotes, GPS unit, and then had the water intrusion there. And it's like every one of these dang companies is producing crap. It's garbage, all of it. And I know, boy, you better believe Motor Guide and Encode ain't none of them will call me wanting to advertise on my channel, but it's just the fact that it's garbage, every last bit of it. They make these things, they build them to tear up, is what they do, because they want you buying more parts and more motors, and the days of getting good quality items that's built to last, it's over. Oh, I just wrapped. Okay. Well, we got lucky there. It swung back around the pole. I ain't trying to break off this early in the video. But you know what I mean? It's like that with all these companies now. They're all garbage. It ain't like you can go and, and say, oh, I'm going to buy such, such and such brand, and I'm going to pay $500 more, but I'm going to have a motor that's going to last me 10 years. Ain't none of them lasting 10 years anymore, unless you don't use them. You know, and, and, and maybe that's what they do. They, they probably have somebody in a corporate office wearing a suit somewhere that's done the analysis and will say the, the average fisherman, let's say, fishes, I don't know how much, 30 times a year, 50 times a year. I, I'm making those numbers up. I don't know. But I promise you, those suits in the offices that work for these companies, I promise you they know how, how many times a year the average person fishes. And they build these things so that the average person can get, if you go 30 times a year, well, well maybe you get five years out of it. Maybe you get seven years out of it. But you get somebody like me that uses it clearly more than that. And it ain't like I'm abusing these things. I'm not, I'm not running these things. I, I'm not trying to tear them up, but I do use them. I put a lot of hours on these things. And so somebody like me in two years time, I will fish as, put as many hours on that motor as what the average person might put on it in five or six years. So things just don't last as long for me. And that's unfortunate, you know, it's just, and, and if it's something like, like them seals, it seems like motor guide would list something in their owner's manual. I got the line all messed up here because I can't make a cast. I'm fired up about this damn motor here. You can tell probably, but you would think if it's going to be a problem that quickly in the owner's manual, there would be something about replacing them seals it'd be part of the maintenance routine there is nothing in that owner's manual i looked nothing in it about replacing them seals nothing so it's just one of them things it's it's something you gotta deal with if you're gonna if you're gonna have motors on your dang kayak that's what you're gonna put up with <clears throat> that's how i know too i got that other kayak you know it's got the pedal drive there and that old town pedal drive you know how i know i ain't gonna have no problems out of it because it's got a five-year warranty now, i promise you by gosh if it was a piece of junk and you was going to have to replace parts and and tear it up and all that it'd have a one-year warranty like all these dang motors <laughs> yeah that's that's how you determine if a product is worth a damn by how much warranty it's got on it. Because it ain't good for business to be, be replacing stuff all the time. Now what gets me now too, and this is, 
this is some more tomfoolery here, and some of y'all may have experienced this. We're about to move on from this dock here too, y'all. Y'all, it's been a it's been a minute since we've got a since we got a bite here. We got a whole bunch of this. I think that's shad right there. I think it's shad. We're gonna make a cast through here. I think that's a big school shad. I ain't real good at identifying fish on the screen unless it's crappie and they're stacked, but but anyway, like I was saying before I got sidetracked, you're looking at that dang screen. Here's some more tomfoolery for you that y'all may have experienced. Oh boy, something hit me right to the end. Maybe that ain't big school shad. Maybe it's something else. Oh, look here, old yellow bass. To be continued on the story here, y'all. We got us a yellow bass, and he's gonna go in the bucket and come with us. That's a quality, a quality bait. We'll try to keep you alive, buddy. How's that sound? We'll keep you alive till we feed you to a catfish. He says, that's a terrible idea. He said, Justin, that's, he ain't never heard a bad idea like that before. I love these on the ultralight. Man, they're so much fun, but boy, you take one of them spikes right there on their fins, or right there in the, in the, in the hand or finger, boy, you in bad shape. Oh, crap. Hang on a minute. You know what you forgot to do? You know what y'all forgot to do when we got to the to the ramp this morning? You forgot to put water in the dang bucket. I swear I can't count onions for nothing. It says something about y'all's lives that you can't remember. Put water in the bucket. It's so much easier to do that at the launch than when we're actually in the dang kayak here. I can't believe y'all. I can't take this nowhere. Okay, though. We're in business, by gosh. I remembered the aerator, but couldn't remember to put water in the dang bucket. All right, he's coming with us, folks. Let's see if there's some more of them over there like that. Let's just see. Might be. I thought that was Shad, but maybe it is Shad, too. Maybe he just some around there. We just happened to put it in front of him. He didn't have no problems. None of these fish have had problems finding it in this pure mud water, though, have they? I think we're probably having to get that bait closer to him because it's muddy, but we've caught enough fish now, by gosh, they the mud ain't affecting it. I think that is Shad, and there's some other fish coming up in there. Got that, that transducer point. It's pointing right up here. But anyway, I was trying to say that dang yellow bass interrupted story time about these unethical companies that's just, they're, they're fleecing us left and right. Here's another thing that some of these companies are doing now. They'll put a warranty on their product, whatever it is, might be a year, might be two years. Now let's say you have a warranty claim during that time and they replace that product. You get the replacement, two weeks later, a month later, you got a problem with the replacement. Well, guess what? You're doo-doo out of luck because the warranty only covered the original product. Yeah, it covered it for two years, but only that original product. The replacement that they sent has no warranty. So what these companies are doing, they're basically like, yeah, okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna factor in the cost that it takes us to make two of these because we know you're gonna file a warranty claim and we'll replace it and then we'll still turn profit because we're not gonna have to replace any more of them. That's, um, bull butter right there if you know what I mean and it's happening folks it's happening there's some kayak companies doing that and I have to believe some of y'all probably know some other companies in the in the real life out there in real world stuff probably the same thing going on it's just it's sad times we live in anymore y'all it's sad times I don't know how we're ever going to change it and get back to the way it was. 
you know prices keep going up on everything quality keeps going and see here and here's the thing with with me i'm value based you know what i mean like if i buy something at a discount no, i don't have a fish hit me right there but if i buy something at a discount <clears throat> I fully expect it not to last as long as a as a more expensive, more reputable brand. You know, I, I, I go into it, that purchase, knowing that I'm probably gonna get less quality because I'm paying less, I'm getting a deal. But that don't exist anymore. These companies, they're charging us more and more and we're getting less and less quality you know they, they've moved all these manufacturing jobs overseas so they're paying pennies on the dollar for labor all the parts for these motors and everything else they all come from china they're paying pennies on the dollar for that stuff them savings they ain't getting passed on to us we're getting the we're not getting the benefit of it if you're going to use cheaper labor and and lesser quality materials then them savings ought to be passed on to us. And oh, we missed another fish right there. But they ain't. Instead, prices keep going up. So we're paying more for worse quality. And it's 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 ridiculous. And, and, and here's the other thing that's going on. And I don't know, maybe some of y'all noticed this, maybe you ain't. But you go to you go to a grocery store. Not only are prices going up, but you're getting less. There's, there's less chips in the bag, less cookies in the box, but you're paying the same price or more. So it's, it's across the board, man. It's everywhere, right? and it's a problem. You know, they, they can tell us inflation's going down, but it ain't if it's, inflation may be going down on paper but if we're paying the same price and getting less product th it's the same thing it just looks it's a different number on their paper so it's crooked across the board i ain't going to go into all the all the, just how crooked everything is but y'all know i'll go on a rant here i'll go on a dang tirade and boy this whole comment box will be lit up here nonsense we already got the porn bots non-stop every time i post a video now the first six comments is them spammers trying to they the comment ain't got no link or nothing and the comment ain't even bad but the profile picture you can tell obviously what they they are and you click on one of their profiles and it's something that's not supposed to be there but that's the new thing now. And every time you, you get them six comments, as soon as you post the video, you block them and here comes some more. Every daggone time, man. It's always something. This right here though, I think is Shad. Cause I just cast that out in front of us here. I think that's Shad. That's a, that's a big school Shad too. Let's, Let's just take a look over here at this dock one more time and shine the scope around. It's hard to compete with all that, man. That's a lot of bait right there, man. A lot of bait. I got that transducer shining right in front of us right now. So all that's bait right here in front of this dock. We'll swing back around, take a look at it, and then we'll move on, see if we can find us some more docks that treat us as good as this one. Oh, there's a bunch of shad right there, man. If I brought my cast net, I'd get all of them. They probably ain't worth getting, though. Probably just thread fin. That's the one thing this life's got. I mean, if I was out here in my other kayak today with no graph on it, we'd have probably caught maybe not as many. I may not have spent as much time on this dock if I didn't know there was fish under it. But I'd have done the same type of fishing and over the course of the day we'd have found a dock or brush pile or something that had some fish on it we'd caught them without any electronics 
But I'll tell you what, this live scope really saves time on is net and shad. But when you can roll up on a school like that and throw your net on it, boy, it saves time. And it saves your net too, because you don't throw on those stumps or brush piles. I can't tell you how many cast nets I've lost through the years. And them things ain't cheap. They keep going up too, like the price of everything else. But I've lost a ton of them just throwing on stuff, stumps and brush piles and things I would have seen on the live scope. So, we could, we can save a lot of time netting bait with that live scope. But this style of fishing here, you know, normally I'm in my other kayak, don't even have a graph on it. Now I catch a ton of fish doing this. And again, I probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have worked this dock as thoroughly today if it wasn't for that live scope. But here's the counter argument to that even. We've spent all this time here on this dock, which means we ain't gonna cover as much water. We don't cover as much water. Maybe we don't get on that tree that's stacked with big crappie today that we would have got on if I wasn't paying attention to that screen. So you can make an argument either way. And what I've learned about the interweb and the comment box is people gonna try to make an argument no matter what you say. So yeah, you might as well just address it all by gosh. That was a decent cast right there. I landed that thing right between that little crevice. Let's see if we can catch this one back there. If we don't, we're gonna move along. Let's see if we can find another spot as bad as this one. All right, let's move along one of them. I think there's another dock right down here on the left. Lord almighty, have we really spent almost an hour fishing this one dock? Y'all, y'all holler at me or something. Tap me on the shoulder and say, Justin, enough, let's move along. So what I'm gonna do, since we got the live scope, we might as well use it. So I'm gonna just mosey along here. We're, I've got it facing toward the shore right now. All right, so you can see here, kind of using it almost like side skin, live side skin at this point, right? So you can see here where we're at and the shoreline starts to come up. Them fish we were seeing there is just more of that shad. And we'll move along here and see if we see any fish. Get us a little far away from the bank. We're about to run aground there, y'all. That's what we're about to do. I need y'all to steer this thing. Yeah, there was a couple fish. Fish will move in and out of the screen quickly because this beam is so narrow. We'll keep an eye on it as we make our way down through here. And we're gonna go down here and fish this at the dock. I'm, I'm inclined to believe this dock will have something on it since the other one did. And it's gonna be out, hopefully a little deeper water maybe. It'll definitely be easier to cast to. There was a little something. I don't know what that was, but only that one or two of them there. But this is something I'll do with the live scope sometimes is just use it like a live side skin. And as I move along, if, if we if a piece of brush, for instance, popped up real quick, had fish all over it, well then I'd circle around and go back to it real quick. So far, I ain't really seeing, I ain't really seeing much through here. I wonder if these fish that are in here ain't more relating to, to an object, you know, they're, they're tight to something. Yeah, this whole area, yeah, it's pretty much, this right here is called a ghost tree. It's just interference. I'm running my settings kind of hot on here. And so we're going to have a little more of that. I 
my settings. I don't know. I don't know if I've covered that since I changed around some stuff. There was it may have been shad right there. I think that's shad. We'll slow down when we get up here to this dock and take a better look. I'll cover my settings though in a minute for any of you that's got live scope. There's some changes I've made to it that's, that's helped me a lot. Yeah, let's let's lower our depth down to 15. And we'll just see if we can. I'm gonna put y'all back in the chest here so we can I can spin this thing around and look up under here. Well, surprisingly, it don't look like there's much up under there, does there? There was something. See, there's a couple right there on that dock post. Let's see. Well, I ain't seeing much up under this one, are you? Okay, there's a couple more back there. Let's just make some casts and see what happens. Let's make some casts through here. There wasn't very many, but they looked like a little bit bigger marks. We'll make a few casts. We don't get any. We'll move along. Yeah, there's a couple fish right there on that. what side of that pole they're on. Nothing right there. Back off this thing a little bit. But yeah, my settings on this thing, I've pretty much turned everything off on it. The noise reject, the ghost reject, um, TVG, all that stuff's completely off. And it clutters up the screen a little more, but the fish show up better that way, especially the smaller ones. So that's something I've been playing with. I think it's somebody over talking. I thought I was hearing voices in my head. We're just gonna make a couple casts here at this. I, there ain't many on it. I thought there might be something different, crappie or something. Got beating and banging going over there on that. And let me just make a let me make a cast right here at this. Oh, oh, I got hit right there. I swam it right by that pole and got hit. Oh crap! I've thrown over that pole. Okay, let's try that one more time there. And then we're gonna move on. Bringing it right by that pole right now. He hit it too, by gosh. I thought I saw something by that pole. Oh, a bigger bluegill. You know what, since the since the yellow bass is all we got in that bucket so far, and he's a decent size. Look at the color on him. Boy, he's pale. I'll throw him in there, too. Well, there's a few more right there now. Let's just... We ain't gonna sit here long, because there's people up there, and it makes me feel weird talking with these people around. 
them settings, I changed all that. The TVG, the ghost reject, noise reject, turned everything off. And it's supposed to, I heard a crappie fisherman talking about this on a podcast, but it rakes it, it runs hotter. You can see fish better and it's quicker. Like you can see things uh, like the process, when you got all the other stuff on, it kind of, even though it's real time, it's just, just a hair off, just a split second off. And it, so it just runs faster. So, so far since I've done that, it bothers me having all that, oh boy, I've made a terrible cast. It bothers me having all that clutter on the screen. I like a clean screen, but I do see more stuff. I see fish better, I see fish more easily, even though there's more junk on the screen. Let's, let's swing around this pole here. Hit that area from the other side, see what it looks like under there. Then we're gonna move on, because y'all know how I am. These people standing around, I don't want them to be talking around them, I'm weird. Now we got people up here that's gonna be beating and banging too. If it ain't lawnmower man, it's construction man every time you go. Let's just throw back over here one time. Let's fix our gulp first. We've had this gulp on, same gulp and jig head the whole time. I'm gonna flip it upside down, see if we can get a few more fish on it. Fingers ain't working right, y'all. There we go. See if we can get a few more fish on it there. Make one more cast this. We don't get something here. We're gonna go on to the next dock down here. Gotta catch fish while we can before this wind picks up. We may be, depending on the direction it's blowing, we may be a little bit shielded from it in this creek, but I think it's blowing real hard, we'll be It'll be swirling around through here. Oh, I had one hit me. All right, one more cast right here. One, one more cast better than that. There we go. Something was nipping. Nip, nip. Must be small bluegill. All right, let's move along here. Get away from old Dumaflotch up here. Do the same thing as we go along here. I'm just going to have that thing pointed to the side. And we'll see if anything stands out to us here as we make our way down to that next dock. Hopefully... Hopefully these construction workers down here are no hobla ingloss. I'm willing to converse with you people today, but that's the extent of my social capabilities. I can't be being social today. I just, I can't do it. I ain't, some days you wake up and you ain't got it in you, all right? Some of you might understand, some of you might not. These introverts and these extroverts and I am extra introverted. <laughs> so, some days I just ain't got it in me. There comes another boat putting in back here at the ramp too. Hopefully they'll move along. I just wanted like a two to three hour window today to be left the hell alone from people in the wind. I don't think it's asking too much. I'm filming this on a weekday. I got out here today while it's still cold. Boy, it's just devoid of fish right there here, man. I mean, there ain't nothing. Right there was one. Don't know what it was. The fish that are here, I mean, I'm inclined to believe they're going to be holding tight to something. We'll hit this dock. We may skip the other one since it's over there by the construction people. 
right over here there's some brush we may go take a look at it I've caught I've caught some good fish here off this brush off this area right over here right there was something let me shine that back see what that was yeah I don't think that's worth going back for This right here might be a little something on that tree, maybe. Right there's a fish. There's something in that tree. I see like one, one there, and looks like two up there. Let's just let's 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 slide back and make a cast or two. You want to? Could I interest you in that? I made a lousy cast too. You can tell I'm out of practice on this, by gosh. It's been a hot minute. Look at fish right over here. I think that tree extends out a little further right there. I'll tell you this, too. Here's something else. What we talking about companies I hate today with the whole motor issues and all that garbage here's another company I hate and I'm I've just about eliminated them from my life is Walmart for years I'd go to Walmart convenience because there's Walmart everywhere groceries are cheaper there yada 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 right so Walmart's just it's a part of life and I hate the place every time I go there I have a bad experience they ain't never got nothing. If I go in there trying to get three things, they're going to be out of at least one of them every time. And it ain't the same thing every time. It's something different every time. That's something hit me right then. You go in there, the store's always nasty. It's a mess. There's people stocking the aisles middle of the day. Why they don't do that at night, I don't know. They used to. But now you go in there middle of the day, you got to walk around pallets of stuff trying to get up and down the aisles. You can't even shop for all the employees stocking shelves, but again, they ain't stocking what you need because they ain't never got what you need. So I always have a bad experience. I'm like, you know, I gotta get rid of Walmart in my life. Well, then we had to, we had the polar vortex come through there last month. I'm gonna make a cast right there. I think that might be some fish on that. But we had that polar vortex come through and I got stuck at home. And so I was having to fix my own meals. And I ended up, I had to walk to the store at one point. And I, I live fairly close to an Audi. It's the closest grocery store. And that's the first time I ever went in there. And food was cheaper and it was pretty good. And so I was like, well, you know what? I'll go to Audi for part of my groceries. I'll go to Ingalls for the things that they don't have. And then I can eliminate Walmart from my grocery shopping. And so, hold on, to be continued. Let me show you something here. These, these fish in this tree, look at this. So first off, transducer pointing right toward this tree. Look at them right there. I mean, the wind's blowing us and shining around. There's some fish up in there. I don't know what they are, maybe bluegill. We'll make a few casts here though, just probe around on it a little bit. So anyway, started going to Aldi and Ingles for the groceries. Eliminated Walmart from my grocery routine. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I go to Walmart for. Dog food. Daphne's got to eat too. And her groceries are still much cheaper at Walmart than what they are if you get it at Ingles or Pet Store. And if I go to the pet store, I gotta go all the way to Knoxville. Inconvenient. That's one thing about Walmart that gets you and keeps you coming back is the convenience of them. So, I got on this website called Chewy.com. 
Now listen, I ain't trying to sell you on no Chewy, okay? They ain't paying me a dime to be on this video. They don't even know who the heck I am. But I get on there, it's a mail order dog food place or cat food, any kind of pet food, pet supplies, it's mail order. And I got on there and, and I was expecting it would be more expensive, right? I mean, the food might be cheaper, but then you're gonna pay a ridiculous shipping charge. Cause I mean, you buy a bag of dog food, it's 30 pounds, 50 pounds, go to the post office and try to mail that thing. I mean, you're gonna spend, a, you're gonna spend as much on shipping as what you're gonna pay for the bag of dog food. And so I'm like, it's, it, it can't be worthwhile. But I get on this site and I'll be doggone if the shipping ain't free. So you got, you got food that's the same price as Walmart and free shipping. I'm like, well, heck far, they'll just have them deliver it to my house. I ain't even got to go to Walmart. I ain't got to load it up, nothing. They can just drop it off at my door. Well, you go to check out on there. We're going to let this boat go by. I hope he ain't going to go over here. We're going to go hit this other brush next. We ain't getting nothing off this. But anyway, you go to check out on this website, and it's got an auto ship option. There's fish. There's just one. Finally got one of them to eat. Let's see what it is. A uh, little bluegill. I was hoping something might be crappie on there. Let's let this boat go by before I continue my story. He may not appreciate Chewy.com and how much I hate Walmart. He may be employee of Walmart or something. Hold on. I hope they ain't gonna want to talk to me. Hey, what's that? No, bluegill and some small crappie. Yeah. We've been. been up here, I've seen you here a couple of times this year. Yeah, I've been netting some shad here. This. I haven't seen much shad on my death finder. I just, I come across some back uh, by that dock. Uh, not this one, not the wooden one, but the other one back yonder there. Yeah. Just to the left of it, there was some shad by, beside it and in front of it. But they. Catfish with the shad. Yeah. But I ain't been doing much good on them either. It's hit or miss. Well, there was a guy bank fishing right below this dock right here on that side mm. a week ago. He drugged one up on the bank that long. Well, I'll be doggone. Catfish. I'll be doggone. Just bank fishing. Yeah. What are you going after today? Crappie or? Well, I hope you find some bigger than what I got. Mine's been about six, seven, eight inches. We take, we, the last time we went down here, caught little ones. I don't know about it. It's that time of year, they ought to be moving up. Yep. Yeah, it's getting, getting about the time. I was trying to get out here this morning before the wind picked up. They say it's supposed to be bad this afternoon. Storm, uh, rain's on the way, so. Yeah. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you. All right, there's my conversation for the day. Now I'm gonna have to take tomorrow off from dealing with people too. Where are they going? I hope he ain't about to fish that brush pile I was wanting to fish. Either way, we're gonna be in earshot the whole time. What are they doing? Oh, crap, that's exactly what they're doing. They just dropped anchor and they're going to fish toward that brush pile. I'll tell you what, let's skip around them. We got these construction workers. They're fishing there where we're going next. Let's move along. We'll go hit some more trees on up in this creek. Y'all come with me, okay? Here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll turn the camera off. I'll get where I'm going. I'll turn it back on. That way y'all don't have to just ride in silence. All right, y'all. Back in the game here. Get the camera back in the chest. I moved up to another pocket in this creek, hopefully away from people. 
what are the odds? Two people on the water today, me and that fella. What are the odds? The first place he was going to fish was the next place you and I were going. <laughs> I mean, that's just bad luck, folks. Just bad luck. He's probably wearing them out on that spot too. But nevertheless, we've come up here in this little other little pocket here. There's some down trees and whatnot. I'll show you here on the screen in a minute while I'm trying to drop this jig down to. Well, I about, about jerked one's jaws off right then. Let me take the camera here. I should have done this before I made that cast. So right here is a tree that comes up. We're at the zero mark. This tree is about 10 feet in front of us, and it looks like a bunch of bluegill right there. Now, I wouldn't mind catching some of them. And we shine it back around. There's a little something down there hanging out toward the bottom of it. Don't know what that is. Here's another one coming up. Don't know what that is. A little something up there at the top, too. Anyway, I rolled in here, saw that, and I thought, well, this is a good a place to start on round two of this. Is any. Hopefully that fella down there will stay there on the brush pile I was wanting to fish and if he comes up here and starts fishing in this boy that'd be some bad luck too he's probably got him another honey hole right here seemed like a nice feller I just can't do people right now I'm just I tell you folks some days you wake up and you just you ain't got it in you I don't care how nice they are you just want to be left the hell alone and the problem going fishing when you want to be left the hell alone is there's always somebody that wants to talk to you on the water or at the boat ramp. Always. It never fails. It's like I can, when I'm not in the mood for people, I can turn this camera on and talk to y'all because it ain't in-person interaction. Well, I think I was in the tree then. I set the hook on that tree, tried to. But they, there's just something about uh, the in-person interaction that just it just drains the life out of me. So anyway, we back in the game. I don't even remember what I was talking about now. I was telling a story of some kind. Oh, I know what it was. I was talking about that dang Chewy.com. So anyway, I get on there because I'm trying to eliminate Walmart. I got to find a way to get Daphne's food. And so the price is the same. It's got free shipping. And if you turn on auto ship, which means you set a time for them to deliver this food monthly, which Daphne goes through about a bag of food a month. You, you look at her, she's skin and bones. You think I'm starving her to death, but she just, I mean, she's all time running. She's all time, she's in, very energetic. But anyway, she goes through about a bag a month. So you turn on that feature, they give you a discount. So now not only is it being delivered to my house, but it's cheaper than what I could get it at Walmart. So I'm doing that now. So now I've pretty much eliminated. Here's a fish, finally. I've pretty much eliminated Walmart with the exception of when I need bird seed. Bird seed is another one of those things that it's a guilty pleasure of mine as we get a bluegill here finally off that tree. I got these bird feeders in front of my living room and I like watching them dang birds eat. I don't know why, but I do. So I buy bird seed. And yeah, I could go to Tractor Supply or Rural King and get it. I could probably order it. I need to look on that Chewy and see if they got it. But uh, Walmart is historically cheaper place to get your seed. I will look on that Chewy thing though and see if they got it. Here's what I don't understand though about this, this Chewy website thing. 
how are they able to ship 30, 50 pound bags of feed and be able to charge less than what you can get it at a local store? Like, how are they able to do that? I mean, if you and I went to the post office or FedEx, UPS, wherever, and we tried to ship a package that weighed 30 to 50 pounds and was in a, you know, a bag as big as a dog food bag, we'd pay out the ass for that. I mean, it'd be, it'd probably be 50 bucks to ship it. But yet they're somehow able to do it and still charge us less than what the bag of food costs at the local store. So there's something going on with that. Either, either the post office is cutting them or whatever shipping service they use. I think it's FedEx actually, there's no fish. Either they've got one heck of a deal that we can't get at the shipping service, or these foods are such a high markup on these things that they can pay the shipping fees and still be able to turn a profit. I don't know which is the, which is the case, but either way, I'm happy to eliminate Walmart from my dog food runs, and I, I think that bag of food is going to show up today via FedEx, I believe. So we'll see what it... I don't guess they could really mess it up unless they rip the bag in shipping. That's the only thing they could really do. And there's probably contingencies on that. I didn't read that far into it. But again, I ain't trying to say, you know, Chewy.com, people. They ain't paying me a dime. They don't know who I am. I'm just telling you, I hate Walmart. And I'm trying to get them out of my life. And this is one of the ways I'm going about it. And if Chewy has bird seed, and I should have already looked at that, if they do, I'll probably never go back to Walmart again. Because there ain't nothing for me at Walmart now, other than bird seed. And I do like my birds. Last fall, I had my windows replaced in my house. I got new windows because I had busted out my bedroom window with a, a rock. I think I threw a rock with the mower and busted my bedroom window. So I ended up getting wind, all new windows for the house because my house was built in 96. And so then was the original windows that was in there. And you could feel the, uh, my old windows, you could, in the cold win winter months, you could put your hand next to the window, you could feel that cold air coming in. I mean, it was just, I was losing so much, so much heat. So I just, I, I replaced them all. And when I did, my living room window used to be two windows next to each other, just side by side. And I said, you know, I want to, had them price me a quote for the windows I, I had them quote me instead of having them two windows side by side in the living room make a picture window out of it big piece of glass solid glass and much to my surprise oh that would hit me another fish right there well if we can get it down to that tree you got to be patient to let it sink down that far but they're stacked with fish they all seem to be kind of small though We'll catch a few more on it. If they're all this size, we'll move along here. But I, I had them price me that picture window. And surprisingly, it was cheaper to get the picture window than it was to have the same setup I had before with the two windows. Because I just assumed, I mean, if you got to have more glass for the picture window and you got to have it cut to whatever the opening in your house is that there would be a fee for that like it would be more expensive but you know what they say when you assume and that was the case the guy explained it yeah there's more glass but there's the material around the glass and all that is less and, and it worked out cheaper so now I got me a big picture window in my living room and so I can see them birds better and so I got the bird feeder set up and Them birds they like eating they eat a lot so i gotta get them that seed but i just don't want to 
I don't want to pay more for it than I have to. And I think Rural King's got some reasonably priced seed, but I don't have a Rural King near me. I got to go drive all the way to Sweetwater to go to Rural King, so, or Maryville. So it's kind of inconvenient. Even if I get a comparable price at Rural King, I'm going to spend more because I got to take my gas and my time to to get there so yeah y'all i'm about to walmart i don't know and i don't know if it's like that at all walmart's not i've went to a few walmarts when i've traveled places for these tournaments just pick up some snacks and supplies and stuff and most of the ones i've been to have been pretty trashy could just be the area but my local walmart man i'm telling you, you go in there you could have three four things on your shopping list and it's guaranteed that they're going to be out of at least one every time and again it ain't the same it ain't the same item it ain't like it's a special edition little debbie cake that just everybody wants and they're running out no it's it's random stuff all the time yeah, you go in one day, there might be out of orange juice. Uh, next day you go in, they ain't got no eggs. You know, it's, I mean, it's always something. So, so far, between Aldi and Ingles, I've been able to just get whatever groceries I wanted. And Aldi's cheaper. Ingles has better pro. Uh, Walmart's produce and meat was always awful anyway the quality awful Ingles is much better Aldi's vegetables are they're pretty cheap it's not always there's been times where I've went to Aldi surveyed their vegetable selection and ended up buying from Ingles but they're they're cheaper if they got a good batch of them I think we're going to move on from this spot. I'm having to let that jig sink down, and I ain't got the patience for it today, y'all. We need some fish that are... We need some fish that are higher up. And my spot lock's going crazy here, trying to hold us in place with this light breeze that's trying to blow down through here. Let me just make one more cast. I ain't going to pick up on this jig till it gets down there. I'm just going to let that thing sink all the way down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna force myself to be patient on this. It, see, this is why I don't do a lot of ultralight fishing in the winter right here, because you get on these fish that are sometimes 15, 20, sometimes deeper than that, and you gotta let that small jig, you gotta let it sink down a long way, and you can use a heavier jig to get it down there quicker. But that slower fall rate, I feel like gets me a lot more bites, and so, you try to sink a 164th ounce jig down 20 feet, you gotta wait about 20, 25 seconds, it seems like. You get another month or so from now, there'll be all kinds of fish up in the shallows. And we can just let that thing sink down a few feet and shellac them. Here's another thing too, and I'm gonna try to show you this on the screen if I can. I want you to look right there. You see that little blip? That's my jig. That right there bouncing? That's my jig. That's that 164th ounce jig showing up on the live scope. When I had my other settings on, when I had the TVG and, and ghost reject and noise reject and all the, them settings turned on, I couldn't see that 164th ounce jig. I could see the bigger jigs and the bigger baits, but I couldn't see the smaller profile in there. Once I turned all that stuff off, suddenly I could see again. So that's a little helpful tidbit for any of y'all out there that's maybe got live scope, thinking about getting it. You want to be able to see these smaller jigs. Let me just make one more cast that direction. 
hopefully that'll help you there by adjusting your settings. The only thing I change on my screen now is the gain. My color gain is, I've got it, I think I've got it set at like 85, which that's different than the gain on your screen. But I will adjust the gain on my screen periodically throughout the day or body that looks like some more out of up shallow um because for whatever reason you get in certain water or the sun at a certain angle on a on a bright day it'll cause you more interference with your screen and so you adjust that gain up or down to kind of dial that in but that's the only thing i tinker with now everything else i just i turn it off and it's made life a lot simpler than getting out and trying to tinker with it all the time and and get the screen completely cleared up it was hard for me initially because i wanted that screen to look pretty and clear i didn't want any any clutter on there i just wanted to see the fish and whatever object I was throwing at. That's all I wanted to see. But if you'll tolerate that ghost tree on there and a little bit of clutter, you'll end up being able to see your light jigs in more detail and you'll be able to see fish more clearly too. It looked like it might be something right there. The thing about this live scope too is when I'm using it and I'm ultralight fishing, I find myself looking for schools of fish. Whereas if we were just out here fishing today in blind, if we were just, you know, my other kayak and we were just making casts down through here at Randall, not seeing what we're casting to we're gonna pick off some more fish. Those solitary fish, those individual fish, things that we would pass up while we're just looking at that screen, we're gonna catch more of those. And so we're gonna get those bites throughout the day that we're not gonna get when I'm watching that dang screen and being like, oh, that's just one fish, I'll keep moving. There's two fish, I'll keep moving, looking for a dang school. I bet you that feller in that boat over there, he's probably on a school of them on that brush that we gonna fish. Okay, here's a little something we're coming up on. Watch this. Look at this right there. See all that? Let's turn our... Let's, let's slide over just a little bit. We'll turn the spotlight back on. We'll make some cast up this tree. All right, let's make a cast over there and see what happens. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit, y'all. It's gonna make things hard on us here in a minute. It's supposed to get bad today. That fella mentioned rain coming in, but I thought it was coming in tomorrow. You know, them dang weather reporters, though, they don't know nothing. The only weather reporter we ever had here in East Tennessee that was worth a damn was Margie Ison. She wasn't no meteorologist. There's a fish, too. She was a weather lady. Didn't have no meteorology degree. She had a map of Tennessee, and if it was going to be sunny, she'd put a sun up over your county. If it was going to rain, she'd have a rain cloud up. And her forecast was more accurate than anybody with these Doppler radars. I was thinking about her the other day. I need to look her up, see if she's still alive. She probably couldn't get a job at a new station if she was trying to today because of the whole meteorology thing. You can't, I'm telling you folks, you can't call them weatherman or weather woman. You gotta call them meteorologists. They take offense. I know, because I've been there. I've had them, I've had one of them come at me on the Instagram because I said weatherman instead of meteorologist. And, and that person reminded me that they've been to school for that 
and they are meteorologists. Weatherman is offensive. And I said, well, hell, I'm offended that you can't get a forecast right. Every time I go out, the wind's blowing harder than you say, and I'm getting rained on when you said it wasn't going to rain. So everybody's offended up in here. It's something, though. 2024, all the technology we got in this world, we still can't get a damn weather forecast right. <laughs> I mean, it's like of all the things, I mean, they've been trying that. They've been trying to get a weather forecast right since the beginning of time and can't do it. I see my jig. I'm going to let that thing drop down a little bit deeper there. I think these might be all bluegill on this thing, too. The wind is going to blow my line every which way. I'm watching that jig for a second here. I'll see if I can get one of them to take it. No, he ain't going to take it. That looks like some bigger fish moving in right there. I wonder what those are. Over there, maybe shad or something, but we'll go over and find out. It'd be nice if it skipjack, wouldn't it? Oh my gosh, oh man, one of them hit me right there. I wonder if that ain't skipjack, folks. Where'd they go? Whatever that hit me right there, that, that was a that was a better thump. I don't see them now, though. They've. Wherever they went, they've. That's skipjack for you. They're, they're a second and gone. Okay, there's some more. There's some more bigger marks on the screen right there. Either. Well, they're in and out. Every time I go to turn, they're gone. I got my skipjack rods with me because I was going to do that when the wind kicked up. Wouldn't hurt my feelings to bust one on an ultralight, though. Give me a little tap. I think that tree right there, though, I think that's probably all bluegill right there. There's something. There's my jig. There was something following it out, too. Come on. I'm going to throw up there a good ways and let it sink down into that mess. We may get snagged, but we may pull something out of there, too. We're just going to pull something out of there, I reckon. I feel him. That's a little better bluegill right there. Now he's another one that's as pale as all get out. You want to come with me, bluegill? Come with me. We might, we might try to feed him to a catfish. If we get something better to put in that bucket, I might let him go. He's hoping I get something better, he said. All right, let's let that sink down into that pile again. As long as this wind stays like this, I'm going to be able to feel. If it gets, well, I should say when it gets harder and it blows a bow in the line, then it's over. You can't, can't feel nothing. Oh, oh, well, I got thumped as I was reeling it out. I jerked it away from him. Let's try that again. At least it ain't. Later, we're getting in the morning here. It's warm enough. It ain't miserable cold right now. It's tolerable now. Oh. 
I don't know where my jig's at. Keep getting bumped. I wonder if it ain't small fish bumping me. I'd say most of them are probably small, but there's a bunch of them on there if I can get them to bite. And the water out here, it's muddy, it's dirty, but I do think it's got a little bit more visibility to it than, than what we had farther back in the creek. Definitely muddier back there in the shallows. Like, there's one. And just show a little patience, Justin. Show a little patience. Slow your hind end down, you get bit. Oh! Come here, bluegill. Come here, come here, come here. Hey, 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 calm it down. Three notches, mister. You can put them with them fins in me. Get on out there. Yeah, water temp out here. 47 degrees out here. It's a degree colder than what it was back there at that other dock. And I'd say we get on out main channels a couple hundred yards that way. I'd say it's probably a degree, uh, another degree cooler. I tell you though, man, you look for that warmer water, you'll oftentimes, especially late winter, early spring, a couple degrees difference can mean the difference of catching fish and not. It's got another one right here. If I can just show the patience to let that jig sink down there where they're at, we'll sit here and just wear them out. You got any bigger friends down there? You ain't telling. Fish ain't gonna tell me nothing. Them fish, they stick together, man. They know. They know I, I ain't I ain't on their side. I'm trying to put a hook in their jaw. Play tug of war with them. They don't find tug of war as fun as I do. I like playing tug of war with fish. Big and small. I'll tell you who's good at tug of war. It's my dog, Daphne. Oh, no. Well, just like Daphne, this tree ain't going to give me my jig back. <laughs> I guarantee it. I guarantee you we ain't getting that jig back. I was trying to say, Daphne's so good at tug of war, she wouldn't even hardly let me get a hold of whatever we're pulling on. Lordy days. Oh, I can't see my line here either. Oh, did I get my did I get my jig off there? No. Oh, I got lucky for a minute. I thought I felt a little little resistance there for a second. Well, let's stick us another jig on, new gulp. I'll show you my I'll show you my jig box. The three of you still watching that give a crap. I carry just a little plastic box and we got my jigs in there. That way it don't matter what kayak I'm in. Always got them on me. I got, this is the size we use today, these 164th ounce with the number eight hooks. I also keep some 130 seconds with the number two size hook. That's what I use when I'm using the three inch gulp. So that way, no matter what kayak I'm in or what I'm doing, I got me some jig heads. Easy access to get to. I used to keep a little bit bigger box and stuff with different sizes, but what I found was I was rarely ever using the other sizes. And in that box, never seemed to be in the kayak that I was in for that day. <laughs> I'd get where I was going and go to use my ultralight rod. I'd break a jig off and I'd be like, oh crap, I'm, my dang box is in the, other, in the other kayak. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep a 
small box with just what I use. I'm going to keep it on my life jacket because I always got my life jacket with me. That stays in the car. So I don't have a chance to forget it. It'd be easier if I just had one kayak, but um, I'm torn because of this whole YouTube crap. I like my pedal kayak better as far as just the fun of fishing. It's a smaller kayak. So catching big fish in it's a lot more intense. The takedowns are more intense. It's just more fun. It's pedal drive, so I don't have the hassle of batteries and all that to charge. So that's nice, but the disadvantage of using that for YouTube purposes is that I don't have the motor and the batteries and all that stuff because having those extra tools helps me catch more fish, which helps me get more videos and expands my range, lets me fish other places, lets me fish on higher wind days or higher current days. And there's another fish. So, oh, he spit it too. The fish, he didn't want to come up here and see y'all. He said you got bad breath and he wasn't going to talk to you today. That fish is antisocial like me today with people. So anyway, when the day comes that my YouTube days are over, I'll probably, well, I say that, but here's another fish. Well, there's a bunch of fish down there when that jig gets to them. They're on it, man. Basically, if, if I wasn't doing YouTube, I wouldn't have this motor and live scope and all this stuff. But I say that, and then when I go to the tournaments, these catfish tournaments, it's nice to have these tools too. Be able to cover more water and fish easily, eat more easily. But simpler is usually better, is my motto. The simpler you can keep something, like, like the motor, you know? I mean, I, I wasted so much time researching the motor issue and having to shop around, try to find the best deal. And I got to spend time hooking my other GPS unit up to this. And it's like, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't have the motor to begin with, I wouldn't have to fool with none of that. I could have spent that time doing something more productive. Now, what I would have spent it on, who knows? I may have just sat there on the couch eating chocolate covered donuts or something. Who knows? But I'd have had the opportunity to do that. You know what I mean? I'd have options. The wind is picking up a little bit, y'all. Still okay for now, but it's picking up. down in that tree a little bit then. I'm going to try to maybe not cast that one as far. See what happens here. Here's another thing about that wind. If it keeps picking up, when it, when it blows against your line, it's going to swing that jig. You're going to have to account for that. If you're trying to cast here, you're going to have to cast there and let that wind bring your line back where you're trying to cast. Oh, thought we had another one. So, anyway, this will be the first ultralight video of the year. Another unedited video. These unedited ultralight videos the last couple years have done really well for me. The unedited catfish videos are a work in progress. The first one I did 
was a total disaster. Um, just, just didn't perform well at all. But I had filmed another one. I had filmed all the unedited catfish videos on back-to-back -back days. And so the first video did terribly, and I almost didn't post the second one. But I didn't have any other content. And so I went ahead and posted it. And that video did very well and had a lot of positive feedback. And I'm like, this is confusing because the first one I had done, I had caught a bigger fish and I had caught more fish and I had caught fish earlier on in the video, but it didn't get, hardly get any views and the average view time was crap. But the second one where I caught less fish and I caught smaller fish, it done better, way better, like way above average for me this time of year. And so I said, well, you know what? I'll try another one. And I did. And it was a home run. It did really well. So I did another one. It did well. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm on to something here. And you know, this, these videos, they're, they're performing well. They're, this is what people want. Lord knows I can sit out there and run my mouth while I wait on fish to bite. So I posted another one. The, the fifth one I posted and for whatever reason it tanked again lousy views you know just didn't get anybody clicking the video the watch time was terrible uh you know so it's weird it's weird why one i'm fascinated by it personally like why 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 didn't you take two videos Posted the same time of year, roughly the same type of thumbnail, almost identical titles. Why will one take off and the other one not? It's amazing. It's fascinating to me. Most of y'all probably don't care about that kind of thing, but I find it very interesting. So I'll be curious to see how this one does, especially since the last... The last few videos, not only the unedited video that didn't do any good, but my last few edited catfish videos have done terrible as well. Way even below average. I mean, this time of year, February is always a terrible month. It's always my lowest number of views per year. So my expectations are very low for this month anyway. But the videos, the last few edited catfish videos I posted have done exceptionally awful <laughs> even by my low standards they've still somehow come below expectations so i don't know i just go out and fish y'all whoever wants to come with me will come along we're gonna move along here these fish here i've I've made, there's a million of them on that pile, but I've brought that jig through so many times and pulled enough of them out, I guess they've said hell with it. The jig is up, for, as they say. That they're, they're done with me. We'll move along here and see what else we can see, see if we can find another school. But yeah, y'all, I'm just going to post. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to do the type of fishing I want to do when I want to do it. And anybody that wants to come with me, come along. If you don't want to come with me, well, that's fine too. People got better stuff to do. I get it. I understand. I'm going to do me. And today, I was in the mood to do some ultralight fishing. It's like I'm out. I was out of catfish bait. I was in the mood to do ultralight fishing. I seen them flares popping up everywhere. I can't remember what to call them. I'm wanting to call them daffodils, but I don't know if that's what they're called or not. 100% certain on that. I'm not sure, but it's one of them old, anywhere there's them old homestead sites, the women would plant them flowers. And this time of year, you get late winter, early. Sometimes they pop up in February, sometimes it's March. But when they start popping up, there's some more fish right there. When they start popping up, that's usually you start seeing some crappie shallow. That's what them old wives that planted them flares. That's why they planted them. That way their, their husbands would know when to go out and catch a crappie dinner. That's back when people actually ate fish. 
now no i'm convinced now nobody eats fish the water's contaminated here in east Tennessee, where i'm at there's these advisory signs up everywhere but even even places you go that people eat crappie and some people keep them out of here to allegedly eat but every time i go somewhere and i'm talking to some crappie fisherman that's approached me you know i don't approach people on the water or at a boat ramp i never do you will never see me instigate a conversation anywhere but when people come up to me wanting to talk and crappie fishermen are very talkative people they always tell me they've caught these crappie today and their freezer's full they don't even know where they're going to put them but by gosh they're taking them I'm like, well, if your freezer's full, why don't you just, I mean, I don't say that out loud, but in my head, I'm like, if your freezer's full, why, you, why don't you just throw back what you got? For some reason, them crappie fishermen can't enjoy catching crappie unless they're keeping them. And then, you know, they got a whole freezer full of crappie that they'll never eat freezer burn probably three inches thick on them things and they'll get mad at me when they hear i use them for catfish bait i had a guy the other day well it's maybe a week or two ago here's oh i lost him but i was at a boat ramp and packing up and a guy come up to me out there and he said are you crappie fishing i said no i've been catfishing today and he said, well, if he's a crappie fisherman, I, I had a couple here I was going to give to you. Now I said, well, I'll, I'll take them. I'll use them as catfish bait. Now he said, catfish bait? You can't use these. I said, by God, you can. As law says, if they over 10 inches caught on rod and reel, you can use them as bait. And, you know, you, you've sat there and called them on rod and reel just because you give them to me. I mean, they're legal. I said, no, nah, I ain't, ain't going to give them to you to use as bait. I was going to give them to you to eat. And I said, well, the fish is dead either way. What do you care whether I'm eating it or or feeding it to a catfish, which I can then put on video, which will then pay me some money. Then I can go buy whatever food I want to eat with. It's all the same. I get fed regardless. The crappie dies regardless. What difference does it make? But these crappie fishermen, folks, they're a temperamental bunch. You can't reason with them. So it was a it, the conversation got awkward after that. Thankfully, I was you know I was packing up. I was about done when he come up to me. Here's the fish. That's a little better one. What do you think, Bluegill? You want to come with me too? He says, "Nope." Come here. Come here. Don't don't fin me. Tell these people hi and bye. He's in the bucket. Oh, that's a better look at that tree right there. Look at that. See how that branch comes out? And you got all them fish right there around it. They're smaller. I bet that's bluegill. But that's a better look at it. It's about five feet down. Them fish are five to ten feet down right there. We hit that we hit that tree at a different angle, I guess, and shows up a little better. Yeah, you can't reason with these crappie fishermen, folks. They, they, they'll they kill every one of them crappie they catch, but heaven forbid I keep just a few. You know, that, and, and that's the thing, like, they'll keep a limit. I don't even know what the limit is, honestly, because I never keep that many. I think it's like 15 or 30 or something like that per person per day. They'll keep, they'll keep a limit every single day they go out, whereas me... You know, if I got on some crappie today, I'd keep me maybe three or four. I wouldn't keep them all. But I'm the devil because I'll use I'll use maybe 20 crappie a year for catfish bait. And I'm the devil. But they'll keep a limit every time they go out and they'll just sit in a dang freezer till they get frostbite all over them and I've dropped into a dang tree right there. I don't want to spook all them fish because look how many they are right there. 
I don't want to spook them all. I'm just going to break it. Oh, I can't hardly break it. Oh, Lord. I had a... I'll tell you this story while we retie here. I had a video get stolen on the Facebook. These foreigners over there or in these internet cafes will steal YouTube videos. Let me stick that up in the seat there. They'll steal these YouTube videos from people like me and other content creators that the videos that have done well, they'll stick them on their Facebook or TikTok or Instagram, wherever. And they will ultimately earn ad revenue on it, right? And then if, sometimes they'll create these fake pages where they try to scam people into thinking that they're talking to me or some other YouTuber when in reality it's somebody in an internet cafe overseas. And so anyway, I had this video get stolen recently. And, Lord, here comes that guy again. So this video gets stolen, and this page that's, the account that's done it has stolen like 50 videos of mine. I mean, it's all my videos on their page. But this one video, by the time I found the account, I had some people tag me in it to let me know about it. But the video had gotten over a million views. I mean, it was incredibly frustrating because I looked it up. When I posted that video, I had gotten 26,000 views, which is nice. You know, 26,000, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. But it's a long ways from a dang million, you know. And this person that stole from me got a million views. And you get that many views, boy, the comments are just... The comment box is a cesspool if you get that many views on anything. And I was scrolling down through there. And it was a video that I had used a crappie for bait in. And boy, people were lighting me up on there, man. They were just going to town on me. What, how I was going to get arrested. They was reporting me, this, that, and the other. Just bluegill. Mm. I think they had live scope. Yeah, that's what I got too. They sit there for an hour. Yeah, I, I see a bunch of fish right here, but it's mostly smaller marks like bluegill. That's what I've been pulling off of it. Did you do any good on that brush pile over there? No. Yeah, I ain't got no live minnows with me. I don't know what to do. I can't find them bunched up anywhere. Yeah, that, that one dock back there on the left, I got some small crappie on it, but they were they were short. There wasn't no keepers, but that's the only that's the only place I got any crappie down through here. It's tough right now. Yeah. Either, no, them, them guys got on this tree. Right here, those two little ones. Yeah. And something drifted up right there. Yeah. They were right there on those trees. Sure were. Yeah, I was just gonna make my way around through here, and that wind keeps picking up by the second. So. Yeah, I'm I don't know whether to go in here or run up the lake and go in that other place on the right up there. Yeah. One's as bad as the other. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck to you. Lord Almighty, y'all. Let's see what we can get right here, though.
They have no idea they're on video today either, do they? <laughs> Somebody's gonna recognize that fella and be like, Bob, you're on the kayak catfish video. Do you know it? Seems like a nice fella. I'm just peopled out, man. It ain't him, it's me. We're blowing up on this tree too. He was talking about them other guys having live scope that he's seen, which means he don't have it. So I wonder, that brush that he was fishing, that he just got one bite on down there, I wonder if we could go down there and maybe have better luck. Because that brush is usually good to me all winter long down there. Let's move along here and see if we can see what he was talking about. Maybe bad intel. You can't trust a crappie fisherman. Yeah, them people on that, that video that got stolen, I finally got it, that account shut down. I had to I had to make a bunch of copyright claims, but that video, man, they were just people on there. I mean, you would have thought I was the damn devil. All because I used the crappie for bait, which is legal to do here in, in Tennessee. Everybody wants to tell you about their state laws, even though I ain't fishing their state. Like, I don't care. Unless I'm in Texas, I don't care what the laws are in Texas. I'll abide by whatever laws the state I'm in. But if I ain't in that state, what do I care? What fellow over there, buddy? I mean, he's watching. He's seen me out. He said the other first time I talked to him, he had seen me out here before. Now, I come out here and net shad sometimes, and he knew them other crappie fishermen. I mean, I tell you what, buddy, he's eagle eye. You catching a fish somewhere, he's gonna mark that spot. This wind is something else right now, you know. It's it's really picking up all of a sudden. We're getting blown around here every way, which way? I'll tell you what let's do. I don't see what he's talking about. At least I don't see any fish on here. Let's run right up here to these other trees. And then we're going to go back. I just want to go look at that brush that he fished back there. That's where I was wanting to go when he rolled up. I want to see what's there. See if we can catch something on it. I do take great pride and satisfaction if, if I see somebody fishing somewhere and they say they ain't caught nothing and then I go right behind them and catch something. I take great pride in that. I shouldn't, but I'm petty like that. We'll just take a look though. I'm, I guess I could put you all on the screen there and let you see there's a little something. A little something out there. Seeing. I don't know if that was, I think that was just the branches close together right there. Yeah, all right, let's turn around, y'all. That fella, he's going over the other pocket. So we definitely ain't going that way. Let's just make a run here, y'all. Ooh, look at all that. Look at all that right there. Is that shad, I guess? Probably shad. Yeah, they're moving awful quick and erratic. It's either shad or skipjack right there. I'm gonna turn this transducer. We're gonna turn it straight in front of us as we move along here. Them fellas going over yonder. We'll go back this way. We'll fish that brush. And the way this wind keeps picking up, once we get done fishing the brush, I'll probably try to get me some skipjack. I'm just gonna troll. I'm gonna troll this creek. I'm gonna head up river and troll the next river or the next creek up from there and see if I can stumble into some skips. 
I'm sure they in here. With all that shad we saw by that first dock we fished, uh, uh, there's some skipjack in there. You get that many shad in a place, there's skips nearby. Now, can I catch them in the muddy water? I, that's remained to be seen here. But I'm gonna do that, and if I can, if I can get some skips in a reasonable time frame, I'm gonna take my catfish pole or with my bigger jig there and see if I can't live scope some of them. But that'll kind of be dependent upon if the wind's blowing too much at that point. Uh, I just won't be able to. At least throwing at the at the catfish and stuff, I can work my way into the wind it ain't like sitting on these brush piles when you're trying to throw a light jig and you know the spot locks moving you around all over and stuff there's a big school of shad right there boy that's a massive school right there yeah y'all we're gonna try to catch a fish i hope this thing's loaded with fish that, that'd tickle me fancy if this thing up here was full of fish after he just caught one on it. He fished it a pretty good while though. Hard to believe he was fishing that long and wasn't catching it. But he don't seem like a type that would lie to me. He seemed like a good fella. I'll tell you what don't lie though is that live scope. If he's if they fish on brush, you're going to see it. Now, I don't see fish laying on bottom very easily with it. I struggle with that. If a catfish is laying like belly to the bottom of the river or creek, whatever you're in, I don't see them. Got to have some distance and space between them. But any fish that's up in the water column, but if it's there, you're going to see it. Eye in the sky, man. CIA government watching we're back over here in the construction zone now we just can't get away from people day weekday morning two boats on the water me and one of the fella we can't get away from nobody all right well, let's see if we can get over here Let's take a look around, see what all's going on. There's that brush. I don't see nothing on that. Let me take a... Okay, right there or something. All right, let's throw at that. See that right there, yonder there? Let's throw at that. 20 feet in front of us right there. <clears throat> maybe, maybe bluegill or something. Usually when I see them crappie on brush, you'll see them stacked. Like there'll be a brush and those will be crappie, 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 crappie. All right here, first daggone cast on this. Bluegill. He's got some friends with him back there too. I see them on the screen right yonder there. I see two. Let me show you this bluegill right there. These people are done with you. I'm going to put you in the bucket, bluegill. That right there, there's all kinds of fish on that. And there's a few on this one, deeper down, right under us, actually. And this one's about 20, 25 feet in front of us right there. Well, that fella said he caught, what, one fish off this? Let's see if we can get two. We're going to be, we're going to be winning the fishing tournament he didn't know he's a part of today. <laughs> About to blow past this thing here. I don't know. I'm gonna hit the spot lock against my better judgment. I, I'm fearing this wind's gonna be circling around every which way. 
I just threw that jig the wrong direction is what I've done. Alright. Yeah, these a bunch of fish right there. It may all be bluegill, but it don't bother me. I like catching bluegill. We've caught what? We've caught bluegill, crappie, and yellow bass today. Got three different species so far. I'm trying to dial in exactly where I need to cast at right here. Keep spinning around every which way. It's hard to figure out where that transducer's pointing. I got me a new system down when I'm going after the cats to help me line up my cast better, but it don't help me in this situation where we're spot locked. It's more for when I'm on the move and targeting an individual fish. With this, I'm just trying to get my jig kind of, I'm trying to run it in that school. Smells like formaldehyde out here. Y'all ever smelt that? I'm having flashbacks of college being human anatomy, physiology class. Let me see who's calling me. Is this the call I need? I don't believe it is. It's a toll free call, which means it's spam. It's spam. I'm waiting on a call, y'all. But that ain't the one. We don't need no spammer call. I see all them fish right there, man. We're gonna catch some of them. Whatever they are, we're gonna catch them. I just gotta get that dang jig in front of them. Okay, something's nipping, nipping. Oh no, they're cranking up the music over there. I'm gonna get copyright dinged. You gotta be kidding me. Oh hell. I'll tell you what y'all, I'm, I'm about to get dinged. is over here cranking up the crap music i'm gonna get dinged on copyright if i keep this playing so i guess it's gonna be the end of the video we got too many damn people out here to enjoy ourselves today so anyway a little bit shorter video i guess than what i anticipated but thank you for coming along but i don't want no dang copyright strike because these people are playing in a radio at the top of the dang volume level so anyway i'll see you in the next hopefully next place we fish together will be a little bit more secluded and private and less people for all of our sakes. Anyway, I'll see you then. Y'all, for those of you stuck around, got a bonus fish here. I come back to this dock to try to get away from the music blaring. Now we just got us a nice fish right here. That's crappie on this dock that we started at first thing. Come on in here, fish. Nice, y'all. That dang music was blaring up there with them construction fellers. I knew I was going to get dinged with copyright problems. YouTube can pick up all that. So anyway, this one had moved on back here. And there apparently was some bigger crappie under that dock because we just got us one here. 11 inches. I'll take that, buddy. That's nice right there, man. We'll stick him down there in the bucket. We'll make a few more casts over there. Wind's really kicking up right now, though. I feel like we've had a lot of interruptions on this video today. I had to turn the camera off because we had to move because the other guy was fishing on us there or the spot we was going to hit. And then the construction workers blaring the music 
this video might be unedited but by gosh i guess it is cut technically since we've since we've had to avoid people best we can i'll tell you what after today i'm peopled out for maybe a week now <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna be able to go anywhere i'm about to get out of here and go chase some skipjack goes what i'm about to do I thought I'd just run back here since it's been a couple hours and the sun's been out a little longer and just see what was going on back here at this dock right now. And lo and behold, I catch a nice crappie. I thought some of them marks were bigger this morning, but everything we were catching was small. We just wasn't either, I wasn't getting in front of them or they wasn't interested one. But we definitely got in our bucket now, we got a few bluegill, yellow bass, and now a crappie. So, even if I don't get any skipjack, I've at least got enough bait to get me out there for a catfish trip. Whether or not I can feed them to anything, who knows? Like I said, catfishing lately, hit or miss for me. I'm either on them or I ain't within 30 miles of them, it seems like. But I'm going to get out there and try anyway, whether I get any skipjack or not. But I do hope to find some skipjack somewhere in this creek. I guess that fella over there, he's done, he's done give up, man. He's, he's fished all over this creek and didn't do no good. He said he's going to the house. He's the smartest one. Boy, I've got that thing all crooked on there. I've still got it crooked on there. That'll work though. Good enough. No more casts than I'm about to make here. Good enough. I'll show you here on the screen. Get the transducer spun back around. All them fish from this morning, they still there. They still up under this dock. That one I got was kind of out in front. Well, I got one right here too. I went to pick up on it, had him. This feels like a, it feels like a crappie away shaking. Yeah, this one here I think may be a little short. I just went to pick up on it. And he was there. He must have ate it while I was trying to show you the scream. He ain't gonna measure. No, that's a nine and a half inch right there. I told them fellas where to come fish at. We we had seen some short crappie. I guess they didn't want to check it out. They kept going where they was going. They just come back through though. I'd like to sit down there and fish at that brush pile. Made a few more casts, but I just, that dang music blaring. YouTube's computer system, whatever they got, it's so good that if somebody's playing a radio in the background it, it, and it picks up on your video, you're deemed. You get a copyright strike. They'll take all your ad revenue and give it to the artist or whatever music group owns the, the song. You could have a three hour video. If there's two seconds of that song that they pick up on, you lose all your ad revenue and you get a copyright strike. So I just, when that happens, when there's a wakeboarder going by and blaring music at the top decibel level or they somebody at a radio at a dock playing or something i just move on it just ain't worth it it's all you can do but despite all of that despite having to have human interaction despite having to hit several different spots through here being interrupted and whatnot Boy, something hit me right then. Despite all of it, I've had a good time out here this morning catching the fish that we've got. It hasn't been a 
a lights out numbers kind of day. It's definitely not a hundred fish day by any stretch, but I've caught enough fish to satisfy my ultralight urge. And now I've got some live baits for the next catfish trip. Hopefully I'll get some skipjack somewhere in here in a minute when I take off after them. And yeah, so overall it's been a good day, y'all. It's been a good day. I've had worse, that's for sure. Next time though, next time we do this, I'm gonna find us somewhere I ain't got no humans. No humans in boats and nobody working on their docks or their houses or anywhere else. That's why I like going over. A lot of my ultralight trips, I film over at a place called Melton Hill, Melton Hill Reservoir. And I like it over there because there's not a lot of, not a lot of development, not a lot of houses. And so you can go for long stretches on short lines, miles with nobody around, unless it's another boater. And that's nice, man. It's, you can kind of get away from people over there. Where I'm at today, uh, you can't, you can't turn around without seeing four houses. It's just populated over here. All right, let's make us one more cast here, and I'm gonna go get after the skipjack, y'all. I apologize for all the disruptions and the human interaction today. I know most of you out there are introverted like me, and every time I've talked about being real introverted, I get people relating to me. So I imagine y'all feel the same way many of you do about human interaction, same way as I do, and I hope it don't bother you on the video, because. <laughs> which again that fellow was nice he was a real nice guy it ain't him it's me it's the old George Costanza line it's not you it's me let's do one more cast if I can that wind's blowing see that wind blowing the big bow in the line it just keeps picking up we seem to be more exposed to it back here it's kind of open back here in this part of the creek Yeah, I'm gonna make a run. See if I can troll around, get some skipjack maybe. And then go home and get some lunch, let Daphne and the dog out. I think that's gonna be the plan for me today, y'all. So anyway, I guess that's it. I guess that's a wrap, y'all. Had worse trips. I'll take it. February, get this many bites. Bluegill, got a nice crappie, yellow bass, got some live baits for a catfish trip. We'll go home happy today, y'all. How about you? So anyway, we'll try to do better next time. I'll try to at least find us a spot that's more suitable for filming and less humans in the next one. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.